What's cracking, everybody? My name is Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, we have a reaction to how Justin Jefferson, wide receiver of the Minnesota Vikings, spent his first million dollars. Now, if you don't know this about me, I'm a big football guy. I love football. I grew up during the 80s and the 90s where it was the 85 Chicago Bears. It was the 84 Chicago Bulls when they drafted Michael Jordan. So I watched basketball and football, and I just watched these legends in Chicago play. And everybody wanted to be a football player. Everybody wanted to be a basketball player. Everybody wanted the glitz, the glam, the fame, and the fortune. And so I live vicariously through these athletes. I was never, I was never good enough to play uh Football in college, I wasn't even good enough to get scouted, but uh, I'm a frustrated jack. But that's why I love the game of business because I can make professional athlete income without having to worry about CTE and taping up my ankles and jumping in treatment. But uh, let's take a look here how Justin Jefferson, professional athlete, deals with his finances. Let's check this out. The one that have uh, two good parents to, to support me, so I didn't have to... I didn't have to go get a job. Go to my job every day and play football. <laughs> By the way, I am a big believer that the biggest breakdown in people's finances is how you're raised by a mom and dad that's in the same home, married, values, principles, on the same page, has got a much better chance at financial success, entrepreneur success, or success in general in life than kids that were raised in a single parent household. How do I know that? It's my situation. It's my scenario, but I won't uh, digress into that. Check out this other episode here, why I feel that uh, the biggest attack in our finances is a single parent household. But let's continue here with Justin Jefferson. Good job, mom and dad, for providing a household that Justin Jefferson can live in where he can focus in on his studies and football. I'll take that every day. Now he's a pro. What's up everybody, money. this is Justin Jefferson, and this is how I spent and saved my first million dollars. By the way, I like how he already said spent and saved. I'm from St. Louis, Louisiana, small town in Louisiana. Growing up. By the way, I will preface it by saying many of you may think that a million dollars is a lot of money. Well, if you added up the house that you want to buy, the neighborhood you want to live in, the education that you want to provide for your children, the vacations that you want to take, the financial independence that you want to go to any restaurant, any mall and slide a credit card without worrying about it going through or not, having the car that you want to drive, flexibility that you want to have, the calendar you want to keep, guess what? You're going to need a million bucks. And just so you know, if that's your desired outcome, well, you have to become a millionaire, whether paper millionaire or in my preference, cash flow millions. So let's continue. Okay, so here we go. He signed a four-year $13.12 million contract. If you don't know much about pro sports and NFL contract, they're not guaranteed. So the mindset is whatever contract that you see on a NFL pro contract, just think half of that. Half of that because, you know, you got figured in taxes, agent fees, expenses, all this stuff. And most likely, a lot of these rookies will either be cut or signed to another deal. He also received a $7.1 million signing bonus. So uh, nice contract here for a rookie. 22nd overall pick in a 2020 draft. To go to from a college kid that, you know, doesn't really ask for much, don't don't really buy much, and then, you know, have millions of dollars in his bank account. It, it was crazy. What I'm so grateful for, I have family to, to guide me through all of that. Definitely had to go get a financial advisor, lawyer. I mean, but I'm not a I'm not a big money spinning person, so I know how to handle my money. <laughs> Being again, another benefit of having mom and dad in the house, guide him, coach him, lead him, parent him, counsel in his corner. Obviously sees the financial blueprint of how mom and dad both handled finances. Big benefit to him also is being raised in a community where he wasn't struggling, uh, also comes out into the financial blueprint. He wasn't eyeballing this and he didn't eyeball drug dealers or just athletes as successful people in the hood. He looked at mom and dad as heroes. He looked at mom and dad as safety, stability, certainty, so he can focus in on a game of football. So therefore his programming with money wasn't from the from the area of deep necessity and need where he had to prove himself with his finances. Because you know, men and women handle finances differently. And so the way he's handling his finances is hey, it's just an expression of how he's dealt with focusing in on his game 
And I want to see a little bit more of his character here as we unravel this video. Being one of the top rookies in the league, you know, you have a lot of course, I got to show something here about him playing against the Bears. Of course, I'm a big Chicago Bears guy. Justin Fields, baby. Can't wait for you to take the Bears to the NFL and win this bad boy. Maybe not this year, though. Definitely not this year. Trying to get as much money as you can off of off of that so you ain't got to ever live off the game checks. Okay, we talked about how we made and saved my money. Now let's talk about Here how I spent my money. By the way, I prefer if you started with how we saved. One of the bills you want to pay always, all the time, first thing when you get your paycheck in is pay yourself first. Treat yourself like a bill. Invest in you all the time. No, I definitely have to get a little bling bling from, you know, I'll say about mm -hmm, 50 on jury. $50,000 on jury. I had to with Leo Frost um, in Houston. He did a lot of guys in, at LSU, and, uh, you know, we just build our con connection over time. So the million bucks, 5% went to jury. Okay. I think I'm going to buy one more thing, and then after that, I'm not a big jury person. Like, I I'll buy jury. Like, I like, I like, you know, how it looks, but... After a while, I'm not too big on it. I just like the main pieces, you know, get what I got to get, and I'm out. <laughs> okay, hey, listen, you made it to the league, made it to the NFL. Have a celebration. If you had a investment or a purchase of just pure splurge and splash, you made it. Respect. Jewelry, 50K. How many of y'all anticipating stupid stuff? Put it in the comment section below. Are you anticipating some dumb purchases right now, like cars, clothes? What else are you anticipating? Put it in the comment section below as you're watching this live or replay. Especially living in Minnesota from Louisiana, I definitely had to grab some more jackets. Okay, here we go, clothes. Nice jeans and stuff like that. So my brothers are really big fashion. By the way, what's the most expensive pair of jeans or piece of clothing that you ever splurge on, spent on, put in the comment section below. I'm curious, as this unravels, for those of you watching this, what's the most expensive piece of clothing that you've ever purchased? For me, it was suits. I spent $1,000 on a suit. I've now found different sources where I can buy suits. I spend no more than $500 on suits. Custom-made, tailored, 500 bucks on suits. I'm not spending more than 1,000, 2,000. And some of you guys may think, I spent a lot of money on clothes. I don't as a cash flow millionaire. I'm always looking for ways to look good, but not spend all that coin for suits, for clothes. So uh, he definitely helped me out with some outfits and you know gave me some tips on what look good and what don't look good. I, I have to say I spent about like 20K. I didn't shop that much. 20,000? Like, 20,000 really dollars like, a freaking clothes, clothes, man. Shoes. Woo! Obviously for retail price, let me give you a money smart tip. Where the money smart guy goes to buy clothes, eBay, real deal, Poshmark. Yes, right. I buy Gucci, I buy Louis, I buy all the name brand, but if I can find it because somebody's selling it and I'm buying it secondhand, that's what I'm doing. Very rarely would you ever find me in Gucci. Very rarely would you find me in Louis store. Very rarely would you find me at these uh, top malls and top brand name stores and buying something brand new. If it is, chances are it's a gift. But for myself individually and personally, I'm buying it secondhand. I didn't shop that much growing up. Like I, I didn't really have like a whole bunch of clothes, a whole bunch of shoes. I just wasn't that type of kid. I mostly played football. I mostly played sports. So as long as I got me some basketball shoes, some football cleats, some gloves, I was good to go. <laughs> Clothing, 20K. Okay, so, so far, 7% of his first million bucks went to jewelry and clothes. In my opinion, you can argue jewelry as an appreciating asset, but definitely clothes, a depreciating asset, especially when you know these clothes makers go to all these different places overseas to make the clothes cheaper and they sell it for 2,000, 3,000 markups here in the United States of America. I always like finding ways to get my money working for me. In other words, appreciating value versus depreciating value. The reason why People become money smart. People become part of the seven-figure squad is because they find ways always to make the money grow for them. Here it is. There's the car. As soon as I figured out I was going to be in the first Of course. Round, <laughs> I definitely had my eyes on the AMG Mercedes AMG. for a long time. By the way, my first AMG, man, uh, when I got my first AMG, what does AMG stand for? You know, I found out what AMG stands for. It goes, when you're rolling this thing, top down, calling your boys, what's up, big dog? How you rolling, man? Ah! What? Oh, my God! AMG. Hey. I don't, well, if you find another definition for AMG, call it corner, whatever it case may be, I'm like, oh, my God! Because I'm buying and rolling 
in my dream car. And that was about, uh, wait, hold on, y'all gonna have to give me a second. About 150,000. I like cars, I like fancy cars, foreign cars. I definitely had to cop the Mercedes, I had to, that was a must. Mercedes, 150,000. By the way, side note on buying cars, I've got many different exotic cars to myself, but I always like buying exotic cars used, never new. Money smart tip for you. And then I buy them under my corporation, and then I buy them so I can have tax deductions on my car. Purchase this book, lower your taxes big time. My tax advisor, Sandy Botkins, came to talk to our guys many times to talk about ways to use your car as a tax deductible gold mine. Check out this video here on how I spent 25 bucks a month on my Rolls Royce. Let's continue. Of course. I bought a of lot course. of shoes. A lot of shoes. Can't hate on this one, man. I'm a I'm a Jordan guy myself, so I got a lot of kicks. But I was 42 years old before I got my first pair of J's. And even then, somebody else gave them to my CEO, mentor, Patrick Bay David, awarded me my first pair of Jordans at the age of 42. And after that, I had personal goal for myself that I hit for 18 months straight. So I got a pair of Jordans, two pairs of Jordans every month. A lot of shoes. The shoes has its own category. You it know? does. I agree. <laughs> this is clothes and then it's I shoes. Agree. Had to get I agree. I concur. Dior's. I got my bias. I, must. I had to got like other pairs of Dior's, Balenciaga's. I had some new Joy's that came out. I had got a lot of stuff actually. Shoes. Woo! <laughs> I didn't even spent $10,000 on my J's. But listen, check out this picture here. I got a whole wall of shoes, whole wall of kicks, sneakerhead dreams. Um, I didn't spend close to this on, on, on shoes. Not at all, man. Um, but I will say this, my favorite pair of J's, 11s or 2s. 2s, why? That's the year he broke his leg. A lot of people know about his, those uh, Jordan 2s. Looks like spaceships, Jordan 11. I love it because that's a Space Jam uh, type of shoe. But what's your favorite pair of J's? What's your favorite pair of kicks? Put it in the comment section below. I would love to know what our seven-figure squad wears. Christmas, Christmas, probably a total of probably like 10. 10,000 on Christmas? My family don't ask for a lot. For gifts, <laughs> gifts and presents, 10,000? I got 10, uh, my mom, uh, like purse, you know, clothes, shoes, jerseys, tickets. Actually, my brothers didn't really ask for much. That was crazy. Good, for, good for that. Me me having the season. Oh, that's, a, that's, that's very good news to know that the family didn't have to say, hey, because you're successful, we're entitled to your money. Good to hear that from his family. The reason that I had was pretty much everybody's Christmas. And then we played the Saints on Christmas Day. Everybody was more into that more than just, you know, the so tradition cool. of Christmas. It was in New Orleans. So everybody stayed in Louisiana. Everybody was everybody was in, in the dome uh, Christmas Day. What a great experience First he's had for his family. family. 10K. Awesome. By the way, what are you guys doing for the holidays? What are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? What are you guys doing for Christmas? I'd love to know how you guys are maximizing your dollar especially knowing that inflation and interest rates are not helping very many people. But how are you making the most of the holiday season? The way I went about it is I said, you know, if I go through life and I'm grateful, I'm thankful, and I'm maximizing every day uh, coming my way, I treat every day like my birthday. I treat every day like a holiday. So therefore, when these days come up, it's no big deal. It's just like another day because I want to celebrate life not only on holidays and birthdays and anniversaries. I want to celebrate life Every day. Here we go. House, got, uh, what you got? Town house in Minnesota. In... Hold on, y'all had to give me Welcome to my crib. Place. What you got? You can show a picture of his house. Well, that leads hey, me back not to bad. A supportive uh, parents. Six hundred forty-five thousand dollars house. That paid, looks like he paid off in cash. Through everything, uh, whether I should rent a place or if I should buy, buy place. a place. I also have a dog too, so condo would have been too small for my dog. They thought it was gonna be a great idea if I bought a place instead of renting one. So we bought like a, a place like four minutes from run the facility. So it was definitely easy to get around Smart. in the snow Smart. Thing during the season. First Minnesota house, 405,000. What did he buy? I'd love to know what he bought. Maybe we need to Google Justin Jefferson's house and put it up here, but very smart. Very smart, Justin Justin Jefferson here. I'm purchasing your first house, only four hundred five thousand. I know it's Minnesota. Uh, I don't know what what do you get for four hundred five thousand dollars in Minnesota. Uh, but what I love to hear is that it's only four minutes away from the facility. So I'm a big believer that time is something we can never get back. 
in the less time that you spent on traffic, just idling, just getting from place to place, in my opinion, is a waste of time. So the more money and more time that you have to get from where you live to where you worked for you to, to create cash flow, to create content or for you to build your business, amen to that. So therefore, you can maximize your time. If you can maximize your time, you can maximize your income, you can maximize your revenue. Conservative in his purchase, I love the fact that he can buy this house and basically on this budget, I, I think you can have a lot of people look at that house down the road to possibly buy it from you. And who wouldn't want to buy a former professional athlete's home? I bought a former car owned by a... Uh, NBA player Raymond Felton, this Rolls Royce. I was thinking about buying Emmett Smith's house here in Addison, um, but uh, it wasn't to my wife's liking. But these are kind of cool things that people look at when they're buying certain things. Ooh, I ah, look at this, bought Justin Jefferson's former house. So the fact that you bought it in an area where a lot of people might be looking at that house, and you add on the fact that you're an NFL wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings, adds a lot of flair to a potential buyer of the house for a higher purchase price than what he bought it. Terry Design. My mom, my mom is is the person for all of that. She loves great. doing all of that interior designing, loves decorating the house. She definitely did all of that. Woman's touch. That'll probably be like another probably like 20k. That's good. Interior design hey. for the house. Yeah. 20k. Is that furniture too? This Forget. is everything, man. This is everything. Probably he didn't have to pay his mom for an interior design fee, and he spent twenty thousand dollars on furniture. Again, very conservative. Listen, uh, for some homes and some pieces of furniture, twenty thousand dollars is just a couch and a love seat. So not bad, mom. I'm purchasing furniture if twenty thousand dollars was the furniture budget minus your interior design fee. I presume that you wouldn't charge your son to do that, but if you did, hey, I think you earned it too as well because your job as a professional athlete, as a professional, as an entrepreneur, is to create jobs in your family. If they're contributing, should also, in my opinion, get paid. I did pretty good, didn't I? <laughs> you did, that's it? <laughs> I, saved, I saved about half of my money, so. Man, I spent, good. Hey, I'll take it, I'll take it. The okay, rest of my first where'd days, you put it? Went to savings. Good. I told, I told you, I'm, I'm good with the money, man. I'm good with the money. I mean, I, I know a lot of guys say, be smart with your money and everything, but um, I mean, there's more than life than you know just spending money on clothes shoes uh cars big old houses so manage your money uh football is not always going to be there for the rest of your life the fact so that he learn can, how to kid knows this already your money smart uh, put it towards good causes and um i mean learn how to to build up on your money so uh, you know we don't want to go broke so got to keep the, that's right keep the bread <laughs> that's right right now the uh Minnesota Vikings are at the top of the NFC North division. Who knows? They might be going to the Super Bowl. They got to get past the Philadelphia Eagles. But super proud of Justin Jefferson and his finances. Uh, out of scale of 1 to 10, I give this kid an 8. Uh, the reason why I don't give him a 9 or a 10 because we didn't find out where he invested money. It was just a bank account. You know, listen, money. I know cash is king, but it should be some form of cash or cash equivalent where it's at least earning some interest, whether it be 1%, 2%, or 3%, just don't let cash sit there idly. And so that's probably where I would add uh, address him where he can find some form of cash equivalent to stack his cash, so therefore it's earning a rate of return. Uh, the other aspect to this, man, salute to mom and dad. Obviously, they raise the kids with values and principles and wisdom. So therefore, he's not uh, looking over his shoulder and, and uh, it doesn't seem like he has got an entourage that he's got to worry about funding and financing. A lot of people have an entourage they get, feel they got to pay their bills to as well. So I'm very, very happy to see uh, a kid like him. And when your finances are in order, you can focus in on your craft, you can focus in on your career, your business, whatever the case may be. I'm pretty certain this kid's earning potential is only going to grow exponentially because he's going to get some endorsement deals, local, regional, national, get some rights to be on commercials on TV. Uh, so he continues to grow his career. He looks very remarkable, good looking kid, tall, handsome, uh, very remarkable type of personality, very charismatic. He's got the opportunity to go places with that. So uh, salute to him and his team that's behind him. And I'm glad a very good outcome came here of this video. It's gonna save this kid a lot of grief and for a long time his money can last if he doesn't make any bad mistakes. So that being said, salute to Justin Jefferson. We'd love to know is your thoughts, your questions, your feedback, please put it in the comment section below. Love to know what you're thinking about if you had the advice 
to give to Justin Jefferson, any other athlete out there? What would you do if you had that same type of situation? That being said, if you found value in this video, please consider hitting like. If you watched a couple of our other videos, if you've done so yet, please subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Before I let you go, please check out this interview I had here with Neon Dion, primetime coach prime, Dion Sanders. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to smart, and be money smart today.